A Democrat powerhouse from the Washington Post turns on Joe Biden, saying he should not run for re-election. And people who are hyper-plugged into the media atmosphere, guys like Brett Hume here, they're explaining this is like an earthquake. If this guy comes out, this guy called David Ignatius, he's a Washington Post columnist. He just published this article, we'll read through it, where he's basically saying, look, enough already, okay? It's time for Biden to not run. And this is causing shockwaves among the media class. They're all saying, uh-oh, if this guy's turning on Joe, a lot of other people are going to be turning on Joe. Here's what Hume says before we jump into the article. For context, you have this David Ignatius op-ed in the Washington Post. For him to say, don't run for president, in the Washington Post, just to put in perspective for people who don't live in Washington, how big a deal that is. It's a very big deal because David Ignatius is one of the one of the princes of the Washington political and journalistic establishment. Ooh. A longtime columnist of the Washington Post. Before that, he spent years at the Wall Street Journal. His father was a senior official at the Washington Post years ago. He is a card-carrying member of that establishment. And for him to come out and say this now, I think he is telling it. And the people of the Biden administration have to worry that if this starts to catch on with other leading liberal journalists, it could become a stampede. It may be hard for them to head off. Big problem and for just him. It is the first chink in the armor. It is the first domino that knocks into the other dominoes. And it's a pretty big deal for him. And my understanding is, you know, obviously I don't read a lot of David Ignatius, but he's a very very establishment journo. Like he takes CIA talking points and all of the foreign war talking points. Okay, he's like the centerpiece for the establishment in many ways. And so if he's saying it's time to go, we're waiting for this to catch fire. And I've got some concerns about this, actually. I think that quite frankly, for the country to have a nice opportunity at beating the Democrats, Joe Biden is probably the best candidate to make that happen. I think he's truthfully the weakest of all of them because they're not going to be able to sell him again, right? They rigged everything in 2020 with their fake letters and their move election rules because of COVID and all the things. And they were able to convince all of us that Trump was so bad and Biden was good enough that we could buy it, right? A lot of America just somewhat bought it. But this time, they're not going to be able to do that again, right? Nobody's going to believe that Biden's going to crush Trump with 81 million votes when everything is in the shape that it is. So if they get rid of him and replace him and they bring in the shiny new Gavin Newsom, that is concerning because then I think people will say, well, let's try something new. Let's try something that's not the old prior president. Let's go with the new, shiny, smooth-talking, manufactured candidate from California, California dreaming, and all this stuff. So that's why I think guys like David Ignatius are hitting the panic button right now. They really feel like there is no upward trajectory for their party, and they've got to start creating momentum to show Biden the door. And there's some people saying Biden should have already been shown the door, you know, that this was part of the plan. They would start warming up Kamala. She's warming up in the, in the bullpen right now. Gavin Newsom's doing the same thing. So now this guy, David Ignatius, oh, Oh my gosh, from the Washington Post, as Brit Hume said, saying Biden should not run again. Wow. So it says here, when he launched his presidency, he said we're in a battle for the soul of our nation. And he's done a lot of very good stuff. He defeated Trump, which was really their big victory. They don't really care about much else other than that. And they prosecuted January 6th, prosecuting their political enemies, Trump, taking out anybody who supported Trump, and so on. It says, I support him, right? So all of this first paragraph of this is, I admire President Biden. He's a really great guy. He's kind of doing the compliment sandwich thing. Give him a compliment first, then blast him, then give him a compliment again. In foreign policy, he managed the delicate balance of helping Ukraine, which is not going so well. And so in his view, he's been a successful and effective president. But there's the big but. But I don't think that Biden and Harris should run for re-election. <gasps> the establishment Death Star is exploding. It's painful to say that given my admiration for much of what they have accomplished. But if he and Harris campaign together in 2024, Here's what it is. I think Biden risks undoing his greatest achievement, which was stopping Trump. I agree with him. That's why we want Joe Biden to stay in position, which is why I think maybe the impeachment is a good thing because it might cause people to rally around Joe. But if David Ignatius and guys like this are already looking for the exits, probably not. I don't think that they are going to rally around him. They're going to say, Joe, it's time to go so that they can slot in somebody else like Indiana Jones. Biden wrote his political testament in his inaugural address, which nobody cared about. Biden would carry two big liabilities in 2020. 82, which again, that number, like they keep talking about this as an age thing. And I don't necessarily think it's an age thing. We've seen Newt Gingrich, for example, is the same age as Joe Biden. Literally, I looked this up. Newt Gingrich is the same age. Newt Gingrich is very competent. He can talk. He's very capable and he could be the president. Joe Biden cannot. So it's about competence, not age necessarily. Like I think people are going to start living to be a lot longer, quite frankly. According to a recent Associated Press Nork poll, this is the problem. 77% of the public, including 
40% of the Democrats think he's too old to be effective for four more years. Biden's age just isn't a Fox News trope. It's been the subject of dinner table conversations across America this summer. And yes, I've been having these same conversations too, my friends. People out there have brought it up to me. They know that I'm political and I don't ever really inquire about people's politics. It just comes up, but they'll tell me, they'll say, I was just out the other day and somebody said, man, have you seen Biden? Yeah, I've seen a lot of him, unfortunately. And this was a person who I would 100% believe voted for Biden last time. Because of their concerns about Biden's age, voters would sensibly focus on the presumptive running mate Harris, but Ignatius says she's also less popular than Biden because she talks about school buses and USB ports. Harris has many laudable qualities, laughable qualities, but the simple fact is that she failed to gain traction. Biden could encourage a more open vice presidential selection process to get a new running mate, but that would not be good. He'd have to, he would absolutely have to have another black woman like Karen Bass or Gina Raimondo, but breaking up a ticket would be a free-for-all that would alienate black women. Of course, Biden would end up more vulnerable. So politicians who know Biden well say that if he were convinced that Trump were truly vanquished, he would feel that he'd accomplish his political mission. But Biden has another chance to say no to himself this time by withdrawing from the 2024 race. It might not be in character for Biden, but it would be a wise choice for the country. Biden has, in many ways, remade himself as president, no longer the glad hand or what, lying plagiarist. Time is running out. In a month or so, this decision will be cast in stone. So like we are waiting for this clock to tick. I can't tell you how excited I am for this clock to expire. And I still don't know if it is going to expire. Now, I think they're kind of, I think this is, this might be a red herring here, you know, because they could always go up to the convention in August of 2024 and make a change. I think, can't they change this? They say after a month, it's going to be too late for other Democrats, including Harris, to test themselves in the primaries to see if they have this stuff. Right now, there's no clear alternative to Biden. No screamingly obvious replacement waiting in the wings. That might be the decider for Biden. He says, there's nobody else, so I have to stay here. But David says, I hope Biden has this conversation with himself. Who's the best person to stop Trump? That was Biden in 2019. We got to ask ourselves about that today. So Ignatius turns on Joe. And as Britt Hume said, not so good. And he's not alone on this. We've got a lot of reports that they are now calling out his lies. This comes over from our friend Amuse. Great follow on Twitter at Amuse. And he's saying that this is CNN now pointing out how often Biden lies about stuff. And he has done... I don't know if it's similar things, but he's sort of told some stories that don't line up quite like this before. Yeah, this president has a, a pattern at this point of either inventing or embellishing stories about his own past, his biography. Like. He did it three times in one speech last month alone. Uh, he claimed he had witnessed a bridge collapse in Pittsburgh when he actually showed up about six hours later. He claimed that his grandfather had died just days before he was born himself at the same hospital. In fact, his grandpa died more than a year before in a different state, not not the same hospital. And uh, and he also repeated a favorite false story that I and others have debunked over and over again about a supposed conversation with an Amtrak train conductor he was friends with, who was actually deceased at the time the conversation would have had to take place. And that's not all. There are some more serious ones in, in my view. Uh, previously in his presidency, he claimed at one point he'd been arrested during a civil rights protest when in other versions of the story, he just said an officer had taken him home lies, uh, from a lies, protest. Lies, he said he had lies, visited lies. The, the Pittsburgh synagogue where worshipers were killed in a 2018 mass shooting. In fact, he'd actually spoken to the rabbi, uh, but never but never went. And he, he's made a whole bunch of others too. Uh, he said at one point, Republicans like to bring this up. He said that he used to drive a tractor trailer, he used to drive an 18 wheeler, never happened. The White House later clarified he used to drive a school bus at one point for as a job briefly. School bus, of course, not an 18 wheeler. No, so whatever his not. intentions, whether it's you know foggy memory about stuff that's going on decades ago or deliberate embellishment, this is an unfortunate pattern that keeps coming up again and again with Joe he's Biden. a liar. He's a liar. He's a plagiarist. He's been lying his whole life in Congress. There's a long history of this. And he thinks he's smarter than everybody. And you know what? For a long time, he's gotten away with a lot of this, okay? He has been screaming at people when he's been campaigning in Delaware, yelling at them, hey, fats, and whatever. But now there's the internet. Now there's a lot of people who can corroborate his claims, and they can't be corroborated because he is a liar. And people are starting to see that. So why would people, right, if every one of these things is a lie, CNN, lie, 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 embellishment, 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 
government. But then they turn over and they say, oh, but he's honest when he says he's never been involved with his son's business deals. That he's honest about. Okay, he lies about literally everything except his business affairs for which he is completely honest. And the Democrats are adhering to that. I think they like to be lied to or something. But it might just be that we're all too stupid to realize the truth. This is so-called Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman, which really invalidates the entire, I think, prize. This is from Christiane Amanpour, right? She's also over at CNN. So when one news anchor tells us about this litany of lies that they've identified, then they bring out their economists from the White House. And they say that, you know, the data from the economists have been really good. Even optimists are so stunned. That's how good it is. That's how stunned they are. It's incredible. So why do most people think the economy's a dumpster fire? Well, it's because there's a disconnect. We just don't get it. When you spend money on inflated goods and services, you're just delusional, right? I mean, the, the goods and services aren't that much more expensive. You're just misremembering it. And your dollars actually have the same value that they used to have or something. Here is the <laughs> regime and these two regime propagandists hopping on media to lie to us and gaslight us into saying that we're all delusional. It's striking thing, if you look at it, it's not just, you know, the economic data have been so really good. I mean, even optimists are just stunned by yeah. how quickly and how painlessly inflation has come down. Yeah, everybody's We're, stunned. You know, no hint of a recession, at least so far. Never know, but no, <laughs> so far. Inflation, not too totally far different world. from the, you know, the target of 2% and it, it, under 3% by most measures. And all of that yesterday. just cheap painlessly. Oh. So this is great. This is, this is a Goldilocks economy. People say it's a terrible economy, but what's really odd yeah. is that people don't behave as if it's a terrible economy. You know, we can talk about surveys in which people seem to be relatively happy with their own financial situation. Really? Or we can just look at behavior. People are out there with a lot of discretionary consumer spending, travel, hotels, restaurants, all of that is Credit booming. Card debts are so people out. are acting as if they're in good shape financially. And yet they say, wow, uh, this is a disastrous economy. Somebody must be disastrous for somebody, but not for me. And we don't really understand why this is happening. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah. and I can come up with multiple stories, but I think important to point out that there is a really profound and peculiar disconnect going on. Yeah, it's just a disconnect. They can't figure it out. So we're all just living in an alternative reality where our goods and services are going up, where people's real wages are not keeping pace with inflation, where nobody trusts the numbers or the economic data at all. They say it's good because they're the people who write the reports. All, right, all of his friends write the reports. He hangs out with the economists because he is a Nobel Prize winning economist economists, so-called. And I'm pretty sure he was also the same idiot who said that the internet was going to be a passing fad, right? Just a passing fad. And so don't, don't worry about the internet. And so I don't know that he's got his eyes on the ball all that well, but they're freaked out about it. David Ignatius is saying time for Joe Biden to go and CNN's calling out his lies. I get the feeling that they're going to try to do something here. Now, you might also see that Biden is going to really dig his heels in on this one so that he does not get booted out because his family is in a pretty precarious position. If he's not running the DOJ, if he's not in charge of all of these levers of power, then he's at risk and the Republicans might come after him or might come after Joe. So there's you know a good basis for him to want to maintain that power, even if he's not really competent. You know, his wife wants to do it. Hunter wants to do it. And so to convince Joe to give up the mantle might be a tall order. And the clock is ticking. We're looking forward to the clock expiring. We'd love to run against Joe. The last thing we want is some alternative slotted in there at the last minute to give them probable pretext to rig and steal the election again. Of course, my friends, we'll continue to cover. Thank you for subscribing wherever it is you're watching this. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. <music>